God, I want your fire. 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 Oh, hallelujah. 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 Just like that preacher of old that prayed a prayer back in the early 1900s, he said, Lord, African-American preacher said, Lord, dip me in the kerosene of thy spirit and set my heart ablaze that I may burn for you. Oh, hallelujah. Take me and dip me in the kerosene of thy spirit and set my heart ablaze that I may burn for you. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 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 And so I can't get, I can't get hungry for you. You must get hungry for yourself. Everyone's at a different place in your walk with God. Everyone, the Spirit of God is speaking to you now about things that need to change, attitudes that need to be adjusted, things that you need to get out the way. That I'm telling you right now, that in order for God to touch you in a way that He wants to touch you, these things need to go. I'm telling you, God will begin to speak to you. Th th those things, someone said, well, won't the fire burn it up? Yes, the fire will. But those things are stopping you from even being hungry. The things that I'm talking about getting out the way are the things that stop you from being hungry to where you get desperate, to where you even press in. And so uh, I was desperate. I was hungry. I was thirsty. I told the Lord, said, Lord, either you come down and touch me or I'm going to die and come up there and touch you. Now, those are desperate words to tell God. But you know what? He don't mind like God's not phased. He doesn't even break out in a sweat. He doesn't even, I mean, he didn't bother him. If you're talking like that, he's just looking for somebody to talk to. He's just looking for somebody who will be bold enough to come to God on that basis. The Bible says the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth. He's looking for people that he can show himself strong in their behalf. And so when you come on that basis of prayer, when you come boldly up to the throne of God, say, God, Either you come down and touch me or I'll die and come up there and touch you. Then God says, okay, I'm gonna, I'll am gonna. i move. I'll come. I'll come visit you. Don't matter where you are. I'll come visit you. He'll come. He'll come visit you in Africa. He'll come visit you in Asia. He'll come visit you in Australia. He'll come visit you in Europe. He'll come visit you in America. Can you say amen? Something happens when you know that He touched you. The apostle Paul could boldly say, I received the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. I, I received the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. He, where did he get it from? From the Lord. From the Lord. God wants to touch you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and, and yes, He'll use people. He'll use men as igniters. That's all I am as a fire lighter. I come and light a fire and watch it burn. And then have to come back a year later to see if it's still burning. And maybe stick a, a, a poker in then shake the grate and throw a couple of more logs on. Hallelujah. 
But I'll tell you what, if he can touch me, he can touch you. If he can touch me, he can touch you. All you got to do is be hungry. All you got to do is be thirsty. All you got to do, all you have to do is just cry out. Don't, no, no, no. Don't come with preconceived ideas. Don't come with the way, well, he's going to touch me this way and he's going to do that. Don't come. Don't come to him with preconceived ideas about the way you think God's going to touch you. Don't. You make a mistake. You miss it. You miss it. Don't come to him with the way he's going to touch you. You miss it. No, no, no. You come to him just hungry and he'll touch you. Don't come with the way he's going to touch you. Don't work it out. Don't. You miss it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Because the way you think he's going to touch you, that's not the way he's going to touch you. He'll touch you some other way. I didn't know what was going to happen that night as I began to cry out to God and I started shut the, 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 um, where we were. About 18 people were there where we were. And I begin to cry out to God, just shout at the top of my lungs. God, I want your fire! 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 My voice started to get hoarse. But I didn't stop. I just cried, God, I want your fire! Now someone said, you don't have to shout. God's not deaf. No, he's not deaf, but he's, he's not nervous either. I was not shouting. I was not shouting for him. I was shouting for me. Because if I didn't shout, I'd say, God, I want your fire. And then I would end up with just a little Holy Ghost. And I, I didn't just want little Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. God, I want your fire! 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 Now, I'm telling you, the most amazing thing happened. That's why those words suddenly mean so much to me, because they jump out of the page and hit me in the middle of the forehead. And I understand what suddenly means, because it was that suddenly. It was like somebody took gasoline and just poured it over my whole body and <laughs> just set me alight. I mean, my whole body just began to burn like fire, just like tingling, like pins and needles, but it wasn't. It was good. It was a good feeling. The only way I can describe to you what it felt like is when you go home tonight, go to your bedside table lamp, unscrew the light bulb, put your finger in the socket, and you'll understand exactly what it felt like. It was awesome. It was wonderful. It was glorious. And the fire of God was burning from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. And, and, and just instantaneously, I was immediately what you might call drunk on the new wine of the Holy Ghost. 
instantaneously. I was in instantaneously. I was beside myself. Instantaneously, I was just laughing uncontrollably, just filled with joy, unspeakable and full of glory. And then, and then just go from laughter to just weeping, just crying. I mean, just a boo-hooing. Just boo-hooing. But it wasn't, it wasn't a cry of sadness, it was a cry of joy. And then to go from laughter to weeping, to speak in other tongues, to, 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 to weeping, to, to laughter, to, to speak in other tongues, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. And one hour went by, two hours went by, three hours went by, four hours went by, five hours went by, six hours went by. One day went by, two days went by, three days went by. In the fourth day, now I'm not praying, oh God, send your fire. Now I was a nervous wreck. I thought, my God, he heard my prayer. He heard me say, either you come down and touch me or I'll die and come up there and touch you. And now he's come down and touch me. Now he's going to kill me and take me home. Now I start to pray, Lord, I'm too young to die. Please don't kill me now. I didn't want to die then. I wanted to have a wife by the name of Adonica and have three kids by the name of Kirsten, Kelly, and Kenneth. I didn't want to die. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Aren't you happy? I, I'm teasing. Now, in, 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 the, in the fourth day, you know, I wasn't praying, God, send you fire anymore. I'm saying, Lord, just lift it so that I can bear it. I know why we're going to have to have a glorified body because otherwise we'd get to heaven and we wouldn't be able to even stand the presence of God. We'd just be crawling around on all fours because this physical body could not take too much of the presence of God. That's why this physical body needs to come become a spiritual body that can stand in the glory and in the presence of God. This corruptible must be put on incorruptible. This mortality must put on immortality so that we can stand and walk and live and dwell in the presence of Almighty God. Otherwise, when we get to heaven, we'll just be on our faces all the time. That's what happened, you know. John was on the Isle of Patmos and Jesus, he said, the Bible says in, in the book of Revelation chapter one, John said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. The Amplified Version says, I was wrapped in his presence. And then uh, Jesus came to him and said, I'm Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. And he said, I fell at his feet as dead. You see, that's what will happen. And that's what happened to Saul. He fell at the feet of Jesus, hallelujah, and was converted. Well, my whole body was affected by the presence of God. Some people say I got touched, but I didn't really feel anything. I'm telling you right now, that's like saying I stuck my hand in a light socket, but I never felt anything. My God, that means that there was no electricity flowing into the light socket if you never felt anything. That's like saying I got my finger jammed in the automobile door, but I never felt a thing. That means you must be paralyzed if you never felt a thing. That means you have no feeling. You have no feeling whatsoever. Now, there are people that say that we preach an experience. You better believe I preach an experience because I'm talking about meeting the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And when you meet the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, it is an experience. Everything about life is an experience. Being born is an experience. Giving birth is an experience. Riding a roller coaster is an experience. Coming to one of these meetings is an experience. Drinking a cup of coffee is an experience. Eating fried chicken is an experience. Yum, yum, it's an experience. And now we come to God and we meet the creator of heaven and earth and we meet Jesus, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. It's an experience you'll never forget. That's why when he touches you, you've got to tell everybody about it. You've got to shout it from the rooftops. You've got to shout it from the mountaintops. I met him. I met him. I met him. I want to tell you about Jesus. I want to tell you about Jesus. I want to tell you about him. I'm going to tell you about him. I'm going to tell you about him. He healed my body. He set me free. He delivered me from drugs and alcohol and all the things of the world. Oh, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you about Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. God, I want your fire. God, I want your fire. 